data protection compliance, is it necessary? Very necessary. Why would you say that? Because everybody, like said, everybody needs to know the role they play about person X's data. Mm -hmm. It's my data. I need to know what you're going to do with it. Um, you even need to know what you're going to do with it. You know, yeah. um, are you going to put it out there? And, and let's face reality. There are people who are getting data, acquiring data. Whether they purchase it legally or they acquire it illegally is another thing. <laughs> Africa podcast where we discuss all issues pertaining to data protection and privacy, data governance, cybersecurity, child online protection, and intellectual property rights across the continent of Africa. In today's industry segment, I have the privilege to be talking to someone that has worked in the technology space for more than a decade, at least I've known him for more than a decade. And I want him to share his experience with us on his journey around data protection compliance. Welcome, Kujo. It's really a pleasure to have you here. I have known you in the tech space for more than a decade, and yeah. I've, I know you've done quite a bit. Yeah. Um, it would be good if you tell us, you know, a bit of where you're coming from and where you are now. Okay. Um, so, yes, originally I studied banking economics and um, somehow didn't um, enter into the formal banking space. Um, um, it's still an, an area of interest to me, but what happened was uh, back then, um, late 90s, I um, had the opportunity to visit one of the mining towns uh, with my dad actually. Um, he had retired from banking um, and uh, was in his own private business. <clears throat> so I accompanied him on a trip um, to other mining companies, like I said. And um, basically, I met these guys there from SA. Um, there was a team, actually, one from SA, one from UK. And um, I recognized an opportunity that, look, if these guys go back, um, who's going to provide local support? So quickly, I... I, I, I contacted them and said, um, is this something they'd be interested in? And I said, yes, obviously, yes, they, they, they'd love that. So quickly arranged for the agreements to be done. Um, and then obviously the training, um, did the one year uh, intensive uh, crash course in software. I specialized in um, SQL, back then it was SQL Linux C++. And then obviously went to the mining company and said, um, hey, I'm the local rep for these guys. And what do you guys think? Obviously, they were very happy because for them, in terms of cost, it would be uh, lower. Um, if, if they needed these guys from SA, the flight cost, the arrangement, it would take time. I'm in Accra, a couple of hours at most, at worst, a couple of days, I'd be you know, on their site and support them. So that's where my 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 um, actual work in technology began. I'd always had an interest in IT anyway, um, and so did that um, software side. And obviously, the, you know, there's a natural progression in every business or entrepreneur. So um, grew into cards, um, yes. plastic cards. Did identification, simple basic ID cards, identification cards did some loyalty cards, um, have done some personalization um, systems and solutions for institutions, including financial institutions and other um, commercial entities. Um, and then obviously, um, um, you know, entered into payments. So then I partnered with uh, my classmate actually, and we ran um, Interpay, mm -hmm. back then it was called Interpay, yeah. now it's called Emergent after it was acquired. And basically, I was in charge of, um, um, I was very operational, but I was in charge of uh, business development. It was a business development rule, um, but um, partnerships and merchants. So partnerships, that was, you know, dealing with all the negotiation with all the telcos, the fin other fintechs, hmm. uh, gifts, anybody who could provide a service that we needed, as well as, you know, 
expanding our market. And then the, the merchants were the businesses that we signed to come on board. <clears throat> I did that till 2018 and I stepped back um, because I felt, I think, <laughs> um, I needed to take a step back. Yeah. You know, um, during that time, did several uh, um, projects, you know. Um, one of the projects I'm very proud of is the National Health um, digital renewal mm. so that makes it possible for every Ghanaian really to just dial the USSD code and um, and be able to renew your national health mm. you know uh, okay. policy pay a premium to renew it and I was lead on that and there the couple of us but for me um, that's one that I always you know um, okay. yeah you always um, you say yes say Good, good job, you know. That's interesting. Yes. I didn't know this. I've known you for about 10 years. Um, yeah, I think yeah. maybe I have to come for the CV again and, and properly go through. But, I mean, Ghana's Data Protection Act was passed in 2012. And uh, we are about a decade into implementation. Um, definitely businesses such as the ones you've handled in the past and some of the ones you're doing now have had obligations under that law to comply. Um, what, what has the journey been so far for you? Um, it's been interesting. I think the law... Um, and obviously, there were very good people who participated in, in, in formulating, you know, contributing and drafting the law. And, and for me, that was good because it, it, as long as it involved, you know, actual practitioners in the industry, then you, may, then you, 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 you ensure that you have good content. You know, it's not just um, um, random and, and, and a bit um, abstract. You know, that's for me. That's the first thing that's that's important to make sure that the law makes sense. It's not about the verbose and and, and the size of you know the documents, but um, actually being you know uh, practical, and that's the first thing. Um, but obviously, if it's the intent, also is good um, that it should be put to good use because there's a lot of data flowing, you know, um, across several channels. Um, for, for me, when I first began to deal with um, data per se, um, yes, you need to recognize that, first of all, who does the data belong to? You know, um, the, the, the person about whom the data was created or the authority, you know, that is actually regulating <coughs> the, um, that, that data or another entity that processes. Mm. And so... Um, you find that every 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 person entity along that chain, you know, definitely has an important role to play. Um, my experience um, in terms of the act, um, well, there hasn't been much. Um, how do you say there, there hasn't been much turbulence? I think it's just people need to know that this is what the act is about. It's supposed to protect people's. Um, um, information, information mm -hmm. yes, um, about themselves. Um, obviously, we must also recognize sovereign, you know, uh, data and, 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 and things like that. Um, and the use for which, you know, the information about a person is being used for. So in my field, for example, FinTech, definitely we will process transactions. But in processing those transactions, there's data you know, we pick about yeah. the person who's transacting. Yeah. So name, maybe a telephone number, um, and, and it, depending on the technology, if it's smart, we could tell your location, yeah. you know. And then obviously from that, you can extract insights. Mm. So if you know your location and the time you do the transaction, you know, we can tell, okay, this is probably where you work, this is probably where you live, you frequent this location, um, you, I mean, you're at this location frequently. Yes. Um, and obviously, if um, you order um, um, food at 9 p.m., for example, you know, <laughs> every day or every weekday, we can tell, well, this is likely your home. So you very live. soon you're going to tell us we're obese? Is that it? <laughs> no. <laughs> no. No, 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 no. I mean, I'm just saying you can, you can, yeah, you can, you can glean, tell. Yeah. yeah, you can glean insights from, 
So far, you know, I'm sure they, I'm sure you've heard the, the, the joke. That, <laughs> yeah, that yeah, the, joke. Yeah, the Google thing about, hey, you should be visiting the, to the dentist. Or the <laughs> yeah. But um, um, I think, like I said, the, the act is good. It has, you know, solid input from, from, from experts and, and everybody who contributed. But it's the offices, you know, sometimes who have uh, challenges. Um, when you say offices, um, officers of the regulatory oh, body, okay. yes, who have who have I think challenges. Um, the law needs to be spelled out clearly for people who are not necessarily um, involved in that space, you know, to understand. Um, I think that's one thing. Education, obviously, and and sometimes again, maybe because they see themselves as public officers, so you know that attitude of of public office. What is um, that? I don't know that. <laughs> well, in, inefficiencies, basically. Oh, okay. For example, okay. you go for, you apply for your certificate mm -hmm. and it, I, I, I don't think you should take more than a month, for example. You yeah. Know, but there's been instances where um, um, I'm, I've helped people to, to go through that process and um, they've had to wait two, three, sometimes five months. Okay. You know? So, okay, so a bit back... Since 2018, when I stepped down, I've been in advisory consulting yeah. for the fintech space. And so, yes, a couple of times I've had to help people um, register. Facilitate, yeah. And it, it isn't a difficult process. They have an online presence, so you go online and apply, fill your details. But in getting the certificate is where sometimes there's an issue. Mm -hmm. And you do need a certificate for other you know, yeah. um, applications that any any um, fintech or organization um, um, would be um, so, applying for. Right, looking at thank them. you. So, as a as a business, um, from where you sit, advising other businesses, you've set up businesses in the past where you've had to also comply with the laws, whether it's registration or notifications or other. Um, do you think that, um, and, and in this case, I'm looking at the context particularly of Ghana and, and the laws that we have, do you think that um, our data protection laws offered enough clarity for you as a business or you thought you needed to do a bit more to really understand the context of, of the law? I, I think when I started, I needed a bit more education. Mm -hmm. um, so yes, I would call on some experts. Um, so one person I, I called on back then was uh, this one. This one he's, okay. he's been a good, you know, a very helpful mm -hmm. resource. And yourself, the key. I mean, I I remember <laughs> um, calling on you a few times to help explain uh, um, back then. And so with that, um, that's when I, I I understood a lot more about what it was all about. Because yes, we all. A lot of people can read and are educated, but what the clauses actually mean, mean. Is, is a different thing, you know, altogether. And how you apply them and the responsibilities that are on you, whether as a, as a data processor Control, or as a data controller, controller mm. you know, people need to understand it well. So you have, sometimes you see certain organizations apply and say, oh, yeah, we are a data controller. But when they get enlightened about what it really means, they say, no, 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 we are data no, no. processor. processor. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Yes. And, and, and um, yeah, I think for me, that was, that was what... Um, so I, I have heard a number of industry players um, raise concerns around um, costs. Is, is this an issue for somebody that has been in the space when it comes to data protection compliance? Well, um, the, on there's two sides. One is the um, commission has certain fees. Um, mm -hmm. In terms of the applications of the costs aren't too much. I think they're reasonable. And and definitely the, the commission also needs to be um, needs to generate, you know, its own funds and be, you know, self sustaining. Mm -hmm. For so for that they must look at the figures and look at what the operational costs are mm -hmm. and, and always see make projections that look we have X, Y, I don't know, 10, 20, 100,000 entities. Yeah. You know, because this act that's the only cover thing, it covers a lot of um, industries and sectors. Yes. So as long as you have 
um, almost every organization applying for the certificate, you know that okay, every year this is what you know to meet your 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 your, your minimum cost and then your, your operational cost. So that's that's fine. But there are certain fees they charge when they say, I think for training, I've forgotten the exact um, kind of training, which is pretty steep, I think, especially for startups. Mm. Um, and, and for startups that are now trying to find their feet and you're charging them somewhere in the region of about 10,000 CDs, you know, and they need a compliance officer um, who may be available and, and will be maybe part of the founding yes. yeah. team. That's okay. I mean, um, obviously, they will need to go through the 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 their own initial training, but yes. the training that comes from the commission um, to be sort of certified, um, it's not every organization that can afford. So maybe they could have it in um, at you know various levels graded. Yes. If you are uh, type A, you pay you maybe know X. Amount, yes, yeah. you know if you are type B. You know, you pay Y, um, higher elements, you know. So, so grades, you know, of, of organizations and um, applicable fees at, at each kind of, of level. I think that would help. Okay. Yeah, because you can't put you, you can't put a multinational at the same level that, at, at, at a, a totally new startup. You okay. Know? Yeah. So for, for the businesses that you have supported in, in the implementation, um, when it came to like getting the right uh, kind of uh, staff mm -hmm. uh, that can help with the compliance, um, can you tell, share with me a bit what this journey has been like and how you have sought to raise capacity? Because I know that across Africa, one of the biggest challenges we've had when it comes to data protection has been the capacity of yeah. of of you know the the people. This is a highly technical area, and invariably every um, sector comes with mm -hmm. its own expertise yeah. um, because you need to understand the workings of the sector yeah. to be able to effectively implement yeah. you know um, any form of compliance around data protection. So. What has that journey been like for mm. you? Um, actually, what a lot of what I've done and advised um, these companies is to look for an expert and um, outsource really to to help. Yes, they would have an internal compliance person, but what you recognize is most of the internal compliance guys aren't up to that level where. Um, they can really break down, you know, the whole act and 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 take ownership. Yeah. You know, um, they can apply it mm -hmm. um, to a certain extent. So that's why um, you'd have some experts, and there are very few. You know, yeah. I think you know from what I say, I I don't know of a lot, but maybe they are there. But there are very few who have that level of knowledge and skill. Yeah. You know. Um, in, in this kind of compliance and data protection to be um, employed um, full-time by, by one entity. Maybe some big companies could. Kind of full, yes. Yeah. But then if it's working full-time for company A, yeah. you know, then it won't be available, available for company X. So you find a lot of times they're working uh, freelance on their own and they consult. Um, and you have to negotiate with them. But obviously, obviously the need for these internal offices is, is key. Um, I think also the Act speaks to that, um, as well as also the um, um, certain other, you know, bylaws and regulations of other, like the Payments Act and, and so on. <coughs> it's, it's very important. Um, and also, I guess maybe that's where I come in sometimes, that, look, we need to, if if you want to abide by the rules, or if you want to be recognized in the industry, you must abide by the rules. You know, and there are certain things you need to make sure that you cover. Um, and one is compliance, safety compliance. Um, if 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 you seek to take shortcuts, you know, yeah. you end up paying more. Yeah. You know, <clears throat> so rather than um, avoiding um, the, necess the, the necessary compliance 
practice practices yeah and 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 task you make sure you cover you know the barest minimum yeah you know uh, and then you're covered you know so that you don't fall short and then have to it's it's better always i would say it's always better to 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 make sure your foundation your base is solid and then when you build on it if there's any um gap or weakness it's easier to fix mm -hmm. than have to go back to ground zero to fix it at that level you know, so once your bases are covered i think um, it makes it easier you know to run and then you find that these organizations are begin to are more or less in a maybe autopilot even yeah yeah has it has the journey been easy or difficult or how would you characterize it um <laughs> it's been interesting initially because people didn't understand and you know the um demand was i say demand was low you know but as they begin to know that look we need this and it becomes a law um, and a requirement, then you have, okay, people beginning to say, hey, is there somebody out there who can really help us um, in terms of getting the policy documents, you know, um, out, you know, um, and submitting them to the regulator, um, making sure that if there are any audits, yeah. they pass it. Um, um, yeah, difficult. Well, again, I mean, there's two sides. So one is obviously on the on those I help, <laughs> yeah, and and the other side is obviously on the on like I said on the commission. But the commission, I guess, they're 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 doing they're doing their best. Um, I haven't had any engagement with them for some time now, um, because now I think it's much easier, you know, to apply. Like I said, maybe just one or two hidden uh, problems. Yes, you know that they have, but I'm sure they'll they'll, they'll get over it. Um, but for me, because I deal with the private sector guys <coughs> who are applying, um, my role um, is always here to tell them and to help them that the, this is what you need to cover. This is what you need to make sure you have. And don't just put out a document because you think you want to put out a document to get a certificate. Make sure that you actually know how to do it uh, because you don't want an auditor coming and then when you are tested, what is in place, what is in practice, is actually different from what is on paper. You know, um, again, like I said, I study economics, and, and there's this <laughs> law, philosophy, good arts yeah. law. Any legislation, any act, anything that you're doing, you know, that, act, that can itself become a target. Don't even do it in the first place. Yeah. You know, because if, 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 if the tough times come, when, when push comes to shove, yeah that's when you know the, you see the cracks right and it's something i i live by and i always tell um organ organizations that i'm helping that for me this is how i play yeah you know if you want me to help you recognize it and you must also um you know try to apply apply that pr uh, principle so um, um i'd say um it's it's been interesting there's been ups and downs but you know, we sail through. You you need to push. Um, but um, let me just give you an example. Um, a couple of years ago, there was a leak about the Electoral Commission, yeah, the, people's data online. Yes. Okay. Now, um, now imagine if that falls into the wrong hands, mm -hmm. right? There's so much that person could do. Yes. Right. Just simply take a picture replace, you know, yes. a picture, and boom, I could be anybody. Could be me. Yes, yeah. you know, obviously, I mean, <laughs> yeah, I could be any, 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 any other person. Well, I mean, even with, yeah, touch up and makeup and so, you know, <laughs> I could be, hey, I could be the next, you know, um, uh, you know, big person out there and yeah. doing, doing anything with it. Yeah. Right. And so that's, that's, that's why, um, Data protection is important, not only from the human side, but also from the systems. You know, you must make sure that you put in adequate security measures, um, both on the technical and uh, technology side, information security, cyber, everything. 
and even the access controls at the human who has access to it. In maybe a, a minute or so, maybe your final words to, because you do a lot of work in the fintech space and your final words to people in that space around compliance. Um, do we need regulation? Yes. Every organization needs regulation. You can't have a wild, wild west situation out there. Otherwise, it'd be chaos, you know. Um, and there's no perfect scenario, you know. Even if you have some little chaos, let there be some order. You can't have total disorder. So is compliance necessary? Is regulation necessary? Yes. Big yes, right? Um, but seek help. Seek the advice of, of, of professionals, of, of advisors, you know, so that... Um, um, you know, as I say, I mean, the the law is such a good thing until you fall short of it, you fall foul. Of it, yeah. You know, and and that's what you always want to avoid. The cost of correction sometimes is more expensive than the cost of compliance. Right. Okay. right? Yeah. And I think those will be my. Thank my, my you, words. thank you, thank you, thank you so much, Kojo, for this insight. I hope we can call on you another time. Definitely, you always pleased to be here. Well, thank you, viewers, for joining us on the Digital Rights Africa podcast. We'll come again um, another time with another conversation from an industry player on all things data protection, data governance privacy, cybersecurity, and intellectual property across Africa. Thank you. Have a good day.